Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Greatest Thief by Andrew Cantrell. It plays two players and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game The Greatest Thief, you are playing against your opponent, and both of you are thieves attempting to steal each other's artifacts. You will be setting up security systems in your own location to prevent the former thief, or maybe your previous partner, from stealing the artifact that you've acquired, while also attempting to go into their fortified base and gather their artifacts while also removing or disabling their security systems. On your turn, you're going to be able to purchase artifacts, move throughout your opponent's building, attempt to disable theirs to get to their artifact, and of course, increase your skill level by training to make it easier to do so. Don't forget, of course, you can also rearrange your building and set different traps and change the way it is kind of fortified, as well as, of course, buying and upgrading traps to make it that much more difficult to get through. Another thing with this game, is, which is very unique, the game is played over over a number of rounds, and each round you are playing by yourself. So you'll come to the table, you'll play your turn, your opponent or other player that is playing at your house can go and do something else. The game can set out for a number of days, you can kind of put it up and put it back out if you would like, and of course you can just kind of go back and forth playing the game, but you're never going to be playing with your opponent adjacent from you because they, you don't want them to see what you're doing, what you're gathering, what you're building, and how far they're getting throughout your uh, base except for the farthest reaching point. Basically, if you can gather your opponent's artifact after getting through their base, secure it in your own, and keep it for a single turn, you'll win the game, but it might be easier than it sounds. I'll show you how it's played, and we'll talk about what you get. To start the game, every single player is going to be getting a player board. They'll write their name down on the bottom middle area where it has indicated the player name, and you'll set it in front of yourself. You can use the, the game box if you want by giving each player a game box to kind of basically set aside their fortified areas, and then you're each going to receive a certain number of security functions. You're going to get a $100 surveillance, you're going to get $200 locks, and then you're going to get a sound system worth $300. The final thing you'll be getting is this little guy here, your artifact, the thing that you need to save and keep protected for the entirety of the game. Each player will get a player envelope, $2,000 in any denominations that you choose, and of course a training card that will kind of allow you to upgrade your skills and abilities to enter not only your opponent's uh, building, but also when you want to do heist jobs to secure more money to then be able to purchase better security for your location. Set aside the two remaining die that you'll be using for the game, the rule book, and all of the upgrades for the security features that you have that you'll be purchasing throughout the game and then begin. On your turn, you get three actions. The first action you can take is to delve into your opponent's base and attempt to uh, roll the dice, get the number higher or equal to the specific security location you're at, and then progressively move on until the point where you reach the artifact and gather that and put it in your base. If you fail at getting the artifact because you get tripped over on a security system, turn all over all the, artif uh, all the security systems except for the one you reach so that your opponent will know how far you got, and then you can proceed to take another action. Uh, of course, you can go ahead and take this same action again because you get three actions and you can take them in any number uh, as you want. So you can take three actions of the same type or all three different types. Another being, you can go ahead and go to a heist job. You'll take three of these cards out. You'll select one of them and you'll go through it just like you would your own opponent's ability. If you succeed, you will gain the reward, and if you fail, you'll suffer the penalty. And then the third option you can do is you're going to be able to skill up. You'll pay the required costs on your skill card. The first plus one bonus is $100. The second is going to be for two, and it's going to cost four. And the final one is plus four, and that's going to run you $800. And you'll be using that for the different traps that your opponent has set or laid out for you. Make sure that you also have all of your money and your training card inside your envelope when it is no longer your turn in the game. There are two additional options you can take uh, when playing the game, and these are always free actions on your turn. One is you can purchase these upgrades here, and you can also, of course, switch them out. So if you have a four, a plus four security, you can switch it out for a plus five as long as you pay the difference in cost. You can buy a whole unique security system that you don't have. And then, of course, you can place them down on this board in any of the locations that you want, as well as rearrange the board to kind of secure your base and change it up.
After you've taken the three actions in any order, as many times as you would like, up to three, you're then going to pass, provided you did or do not want to do any of the optional actions, and then it's your opponent's turn. And it'll continue going like that until somebody secures the artifact, and then after that, they get to keep it for one turn. If they can, they will win the game of Greatest Thief. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, with a few twists and turns in it. Let's talk about my review now for the game. So there's quite a few uh, luck-based aspects in this game, if you haven't noticed, because you'll be rolling die and you can mitigate that by increasing your training, using your training card and spending currency to kind of make it easier for you. But in general, if you can roll 12s your entire game, it won't matter, you'll win. And in fact, you can win fairly quickly. Uh, but there is a nice little aspect of you have to actually make sure you keep your opponent's artifact for a whole single turn because they will have the same opportunity to steal it back from you and score uh, the artifact. And in fact, they can take that action twice and potentially steal their artifact back and steal yours. And that's what's gonna happen a lot in this game, stealing. You can go back and forth trying to protect the artifact that you have and steal the artifact that uh, your opponent has and basically secure that for a turn. You're going to need money, and in order to gather the money, you'll need to do these, these specific heist jobs, which will give you money to do, buy these upgrades, and the upgrades obviously are going to be much more challenging for your opponents to match. Uh, they can go anywhere up to, I believe, a plus 10, uh, but there's a bunch of plus 9s and 7s, and uh, the average roll for a die is, for two dice, is 7, which means that you probably want to have your security systems at about 50% for each slot, but what you start with is a little different than what you're going to need. So basically, as you progress the game, your security systems will get better, it'll be more challenging for your opponents to go through, and of course you can spend more actions to gather the cards. And there's mainly two specific styles of play in this game. One is to kind of gather the upgrades and mainly protect yourself and worry less about getting through your opponent's uh, area, and then the other one is simply trying to train yourself to just jump into the fray. And of course you can do a mix and match of kind of all three of the different actions where you're trying to train yourself, and also you're going in here and utilizing your training to score money, to protect yourself, and then with extra actions you can go in and attempt to get your opponent's uh, specific artifact. Um, but I feel like there's kind of the best style, st the best play method is going to be to take two of those and kind of focus on them. Always go for a little bit of money, of course, because you do need to protect yourself. But uh, I personally like to be aggressive uh, because if you can get really lucky on your rolls, you can push through your opponent's defenses and break away and get their artifact. Uh, this is a really unique game. I haven't seen a whole lot of games where you sit there and play your turn and then you walk away by passing the uh, your turn mark to your opponent and then uh, they can come and sit down and play. I actually left this on my kitchen table so I would be in the living room, I would get up and notice that it was my turn, I would play it and I would go back or go into the bathroom or something like that. My wife would come by while she was on her way from at, out of the work or going to her room and she would sit there and take her turn and kind of go back and forth. That's an amazing concept and also one that can be a little frustrating because you might not want to leave the game on the table for a long period of time depending on where you live and how much space you have. Uh, but the the concept itself is cool and for me now that I have a house and an extra tons of extra playing areas leaving a game somewhere for you know maybe a day or so or even less I mean you can win this game in a matter of like four or five rounds uh, provided you get a little lucky and your opponents don't but uh, having the kind of uh, option to sit down and play kind of whenever you want or in between when you're doing something is a really cool concept and I actually really enjoy that about this game but I can see where some players might not the luck based aspect of the game yes is one of those things where you're either not going to like it or you will. There is mitigation, but in general, if you roll high enough, you'll basically win the game. However, it's, you know, it's, it's percentage-based, it's chance-based, and mitigation is always nice, especially with the training. Spending money to purchase upgrades, all that is really fun, and you feel really immersed as you're trying to go through the specific areas uh, that your opponents kind of lay out for you, and you do feel like the alarms are changing, the security system is changing, and the artifact space is no longer in the same area, and you're constantly having to make new strategies or upgrade different aspects of your card, and your opponent doesn't know what upgrades you have, so you have to make, try and protect yourself as much as possible, give them as little information as possible, and always switch up your strategy. Overall, this is an exciting, fun game. The artwork's pretty straightforward. There's not a huge amount of artwork in the game, obviously. It's just the tokens, mainly some symbols, and the player board, which works just fine. It's Game Crafter, so it means you can have some soot on your fingers when playing. And for some reason, my copy came with three versions of the game, but that might just be because I am reviewing it, and they had, maybe this is like the reviewer's copy or the publisher's type of copy, so they can see more 
multiple games being played at once. But what you get in the game is enough to play with two players and potentially more, and you're going to have a good time with this one. Another cool aspect of this game is I feel like you could play with more than one player, and that would make it, or more than two players, I should say, and that would make it pretty interesting. I'd like to see what would happen if you played with three and you can kind of steal between anybody's artifacts. And as long as you left uh, your turn with two artifacts or, or more remaining on your side of the field, you'll win. I don't know how that would exactly work, but I'm down to try it. And this is a cool game that I'm definitely gonna have Max and Josh play this week. I might even have it done on stream, we'll see. But overall, Greatest Thief, a solid, fun little game, provided you don't mind, mind a ton of luck. And of course, the fact that you leave it on the table somewhere and you have to come back and forth to play it. That's kind of like a, a, a positive and potentially a negative. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section below. Is this a game you'd like to pick up? Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Greatest Thief. If you wanna pick it up, like I said, there's a link down below in the description to pick up the game. Let me know what you think about it. Also hit that subscribe button, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button. It greatly helps us out. And hopefully if you watched more than one of our videos so far, you might find it worthwhile to subscribe to see other videos that will allow you to kind of determine if this is a game for you or games for you that we kind of review throughout here. But anyway, that button press means a hell of a lot to me and um, it might just be an easy thing for you. Even if you only watch one or two videos here once in a while, even like four or five, every four or five months, I just greatly appreciate it. Even just you watching this video here now. Also guys, Moonshell is being manufactured on Monday. Almost everything is underway. All of the uh, art and everything is done and we will give you more updates as well from there. Patreon members, thank you so much for those of you who have went above and beyond the realm of expectations by donating even a dollar on Patreon. That helps us out with our videos, our live streams, our content on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and all that stuff. So thank you, thank you so much. We appreciate you very, very much. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to being the greatest thief without you next time. <laughs>